Hi, it's Roger here with episode number seven of Entrepreneur TV, and I am coming from Johannesburg in South Africa, and that is not a blue sky. I'm actually indoors right now uh, at the Monte Cassino complex, where I'm going to share the seventh of the principles on 10 times in your business, which is team. So we talked about time on the last of the episodes. This one is about team. And it's about how team and time are interrelated. When someone says, I don't have enough time, what they're really saying is I don't have the right team. Because obviously, you have people like Richard Branson who have got thousands and thousands of people working with him and his team. And as a result of that, he's got all the time that he actually needs. Uh, so how do we actually get started when most of us say, well, when I start my business up, I don't have the money to be able to afford a team. And the real key thing is to realize teams come in different forms. If you really realize the power of having that team, uh, then you can start seeing that to begin with. It's not even about how you get people onto your team. It's about how you go and join someone else's team. So I'm going to tell you a story today. It's a story which actually leads to this next couple of days. The reason that I'm actually here in Monte Casino is because we are running our Genius U conference. Uh, we're going to be launching a number of new programs, including something I'm really excited about, which is the Genius School. And so this is now going to be uh, all over the world people who are gonna be educated to be able to support kids all the way through to teenagers, uh, to be able to learn differently, to be able to actually be ready for this new paradigm. And so the real question is, like, how did we get to a point where we now have educators all over the world that wanna be a part of this? And it didn't start by going out and getting a massive team. The whole thing started way back how many years ago? Wow, probably, I don't know, maybe like seven years ago when my kids were going to the green school. And when I was going to the Green School at that point, I had an opportunity to support John and Cynthia Hardy, who were the ones that started the Green School. And I helped them to build a board. I became the chairman of the board. And so I had an opportunity to work really to support my own kids within the paradigm of an entirely new way of doing education. Now, that wasn't me actually even looking to get into education. It's just me having a passion and a purpose for education. Uh, and you'll see that in the United Nations Global Goals, if you go to my GDSU profile, that my number one goal that I'm aligned to is quality education. Now, I didn't know that at the time. I was involved in all sorts of different charities, all sorts of different programs, but obviously being a dad with my kids, uh, I wanted to make sure they had the best education and having a chance to support the Green School was a really good step number one. So, like almost by intuition, doing the same thing I'd do if I was starting a business, it wasn't about how you get a team around you, it's about who's the team you want to join. This is the very first level. If you're at that point, which is like, I just gotta get going, don't think about this from the point of view of saying, why can't I find people to come join my team like a football team? If you don't have the ball, if you don't have the team, if you haven't got the experience, why would anyone come and join your team? But if you go out there looking on the football pitch for whether anyone needs you, you're always gonna find that there's gonna be someone there who says, hey, why don't you come and join our team? So it just so happened that getting involved in the Green School got me so involved in the whole future of education. Just the fact that there is no question, and we all agree that the entire education system needs to change in order for us to be able to prepare kids to be far more self-aware, to be far stronger leaders, aware of what they're up to, what they want, as opposed to just getting themselves trained for university or job. Uh, and this is all about how do we actually go about redesigning a system that's been around for over 100 years. So the number one thing, which was just by getting involved with another team, is it allowed me to be able to learn all about uh, what goes on within the education system from experts around the world, uh, be part of what was a revolutionary system in itself in Bali as my kids grew up. And then that led to the next step. And the next step was as my kids were going through their final years, I thought, well, there must be a way that we can actually get this message out to more people. Uh, speaking with John, with Cynthia, I said, well, why don't we actually start doing some summer camps? Now, they didn't have experience doing summer camps. I didn't have experience doing summer camps. So I connected up with some good friends all the way from the US, Bobby DePorter and Joe Chapon set up a long time back something called Super Camp where they had already had like hundreds of thousands of kids who'd gone through this. So I thought, well, why don't we actually bring Supercamp together with the concept of Green School and create Green Supercamp, which is what we did. And as a result of actually bringing together, going from, first of all, just working together with John and Cynthia, where effectively you could say that's like the very first level of like a, a customer of one, right? Like where you're actually like supporting someone at one level from the point of view of like the uh, impact meter. And then the second step, which is actually how do you get to now 10 customers or 100 customers who you can actually really start making an impact. Uh, that happened as a result of not trying to figure it out for myself, but getting the very best super camp I could find, uh, the best summer camp I could find, linking it together with the best school and creating green super camp. And that then 
evolved and grew so that 100 kids around the world had a chance to come and experience the Green School together with all the tools that the SuperCamp teaches in terms of accelerated learning, <clears throat> in terms of self-awareness. And that then led to me then having my kids come out of uh, uh, the school, go off to university, uh, and then in conversation with some of the educators within our network, we said, well, what would be possible if we went beyond the concept of green? And we actually started thinking about the whole child and what the world would be looking like if we linked everything to tech, if we linked everything uh, to the uh, very latest uh, like you know, trends that would allow kids to actually be able to not be getting themselves ready for businesses or jobs that won't exist in the future, but would actually get them ready for the businesses or jobs that would exist. And so that took me out to Silicon Valley. It got me into Abundance 360, where I learned from people like Peter Demandis, uh, who has a whole concept of how he sees the future of education. It allowed me to learn from the likes of Elon Musk, who has obviously his own kids going to a school that he designed on his own. And from all of that, it just so happened that it was only one year ago, exactly one year ago, it was in the end of January, beginning of February last year, that I was with two of our network, two of the people that are in my mentoring circle, uh, Hilda Lundestedt, who is from South Africa, right from here, and also uh, Radka Donalova from the Czech Republic, who had both come out to be at Abundance 360, which is Peter Demandis' program for entrepreneurs. And because education was such a big area, all three of us were saying like, we should really get something going. And that's where the concept of Genius School really got started. Here's an image from, uh, 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 from uh, just outside where we actually ran uh, the program on Radio Drive, uh, which was at the, um, uh, what was it, the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. And this was us actually having mapped out what a future picture could look like if companies were able to support the kids and even support the schools collectively for an entirely new economy and a whole new way of thinking about the whole world differently through the eyes of the kids. We came up with uh, a whole plan behind this and then two of our educators, uh, Rastika and uh, Angie, who are both from New Zealand, they took on the whole concept of the Green School, uh, ran the first uh, educator program, and we actually went from what's more like a, a level three business. I wouldn't even call it a business because it's really an organization which is there to support uh, now the future of education. Went to a level four where now we're impacting thousands of people around the world with our first educators on board as well. What's gonna happen over this next week is we're gonna be uh, launching an entire pathway which kids can get involved in. We're gonna have our first camps, which are gonna be happening not just for kids, but whole families, where everyone actually gets to get really clear about how we prepare for a whole different future and have a whole lot of fun at the same time. And I share this story because even those who might have already achieved certain success in different areas of their lives, uh, whether it's a Richard Branson or uh, whether it's um, uh, you know, a Bill Gates, whenever they're starting something new, they always go back to first principles. They roll up their sleeves, they say, whose team can I join so I can learn from others? And having that humility and having that, that sense of saying, I don't have to do it all on my own, I don't have to have something that's like totally different from everyone else's things, and actually be able to then from there, be able to then actually go join other people's games, learn from them, and then from that spot, actually then grow your own team in your own way at level one, and let me just walk through this step by step. If you haven't yet got one customer, go join someone else's team and let them be your customer. If, on the other hand, you already have got someone that you're in partnership with, then start thinking about how, at level two, you can start making your customers part of your team as well, so you can co-create together. If that's working, then you can go to level three, where you're then getting a halo around you, which are contractors, part-time people that can actually work on your plan now, so that you can actually turn your time into team which then leads to the fourth level, which is where you've now got like a thousand customers and you can now bring on board and you can afford to bring on board full-time staff to work with you as well. You do that and then the rest is history. It allows you to then lift up from level to level, but understanding to begin with, connect with others before you want them or expect them to connect with you will make all the difference. So with that being shared, um, whose team could you join, right? Like what would be a pathway um, that someone else has already designed that you could be a part of? And then as you actually start thinking and walking and step by step going forward, if you were to actually have a team that was gonna really stretch you to the next level, then what kind of a world-class team would you go for? Who would you go out and look to serve in such a way that you're giving to them before you're asking them to give to you? And with that, over this next couple of days, I will share with you the results of actually having out here in South Africa, uh, the likes of Angie who's running Genius School, Joe Formosa who's running an entire new team on health dynamics, uh, Paul Dunn, who's running a whole new team of educators for 
B1G1. And here we are outside where we actually now have real sky. And it's a real blue sky up there right now as well. And uh, we are looking forward to a super awesome couple of days ahead. And I look forward to hearing from you how you evolve your team in the coming months. Until the next video, we'll catch up with you later.